Hello and welcome to Taiwan Talks. I'm Inka Vat. Several times in the South China Sea this year, Chinese maritime militia and Coast Guard vessels, including this monster ship, entered Vietnam's exclusive economic zone close to Hanoi's offshore oil and gas fields. Five years ago, this location, Vanguard Bank, in the Western Spratlys, was the site of an intense standoff between China and Vietnam, lasting three months. Does this help explain the relationship between Vietnam and Russia, whose oil and gas joint ventures have produced 250 million tons of oil? Today, we look into Vietnam's partnership with Russia, how it acts as a hedge against China and the U.S., and whether Hanoi is skillfully balancing all these great powers through its bamboo diplomacy. Joining us today are Raymond Sung, Prospect Foundation Deputy CEO, and Hung Tam Seng, Ho Chi Minh City University of Social Sciences and Humanities, Faculty of International Relations, Lecturer and National Taiwan University Visiting Scholar. A very warm welcome to you both on the show today. On his state visit to Hanoi, Vladimir Putin signed 11 economic and defense agreements, including more energy deals. One was an investment license for state-owned Zarubezneft to develop a new drilling block off Vietnam's coast. But Hanoi's oil and gas exploration efforts have been continually dogged by harassment from Beijing, which even pressured Vietnam to cancel a contract with Spain's Repsol in 2018. This was Putin's fifth visit to Vietnam, the last in 2017, and the third country he has visited since his re-election in March this year, directly following North Korea. Professor Hun, let me come to you first. So how have Russia's contracts in the South China Sea been faring? Um, I think it's quite quite interesting because uh, Vietnam still pings its half on uh, Russia continued participation in hydro carbon project in the South China Sea amid China intensifying uh, obstruction, and uh, Vietnamese investment in Russian oil and gas reserve uh, through the uh, Rust Vis Petro uh, joint uh, venture between stake on. Uh, Zaro Vietnam and Petro Vietnam. So you're saying not only uh, is Russia investing um, in offshore Vietnam, but also Vietnam is investing in the Russian um, uh, located oil and gas field. Yeah. Raymond, can I ask you? Um, you know, Professor just mentioned about no. the China's uh, pressure. To what extent does the unlimited partnership between North uh, between uh, China and Russia, you know? How, how does it curb Beijing's belligerence towards Vietnam in I the South China Sea? No matter concession given to India or company or Spain or Western companies will be uh, harassed by uh, Chinese and uh, Russians uh, may be considered uh, a bit uh, safer. And also one point of noteworth, noteworthy is in the joint statement between Putin and uh, the leaders of uh, Vietnam. Uh, saying that uh, they uh, support uh, oil exploration on Vietnamese continental shelf in accordance, to, in accordance with UNCLOS. Mm -hmm. It's very, very clear to say that uh, offshore areas uh, f uh, under the target for oil exploration is Vietnamese continental shelf, mm -hmm. which is a very, very soft uh, stink to uh, uh, claim of uh, Vietnamese ownership of those sovereign rights mm. for those oil. Mm. But, it, but it didn't hold back, Professor Huynh, it didn't hold back um, China from uh, ignoring that in the case of the Philippines, where, where various islands and features are within their uh, ex exclusive um, economic zone. Uh, can, I, can I ask you, you know, to what extent do you think um, that the Vietnam is holding Russia as a hedge um, against China? Because it's interesting that in the South China Sea, Russia backs Vietnam, but in the East China Sea, uh, Russia backs China. I think in the South China Sea, uh, Vietnam may have some concession from Beijing, and Vietnam oil investment with Russia will continue in the short term if Russia has the run to play in the triangles. Uh, however, in the long term, I'm not sure that China will uh, cease its intimidation over Vietnam in the South China Sea. So you don't think it will stop on, on the account of Russia being involved? Yes. Right. Okay. okay. Slight uh, disagreement let's, there. Let's okay. See, no. Vietnam greeted Putin with the highest honor, including a 21 gun salute and honor guard, and with President Do Lam personally waiting outside the presidential palace. Russia Vietnam ties are rooted in the Cold War, and they have forged a comprehensive strategic partnership since 2012. The visit was seen by the international community as Hanoi helping to offset Putin's isolation in the Russian leader's time of need. Uh, 
Raymond, let me come to you uh, first. So tell me, how would you characterize the relationship between Vietnam and Russia? That goes back to decades. Actually, in next year, 2025, they are celebrating the 75th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic tie which was established back to 1950s when Vietnam is still under the independence war against French. So you see that Soviet Union supported Vietnam even at that time. And also uh, US, um, USSR supported Vietnam as a, in terms of air defense in the American war uh, of Vietnam. So the Vietnamese people has an inter affection towards the Russian people, and they see Russia very, very different from the Western world. And also, the, uh, um, actually, the Russia, China, and India are among the three traditional uh, first-tier allies we call the Comprehensive Strategic Partnership. Uh, so uh, the historical tie between Vietnam and Russia is very, very strong, go back very, very, very deep, uh, rooted in Vietnamese uh, societies. Professor Hun, I mean, Vietnam says that their relationship with Russia is filled with loyalty and gratitude. Um, I agree with Raymond to some extent, uh, especially on the long-standing relationship between Russia and Vietnam, that back to the Soviet Union. Uh, we know that the Soviet Union support for Vietnam is quite uh, tremendous and we have the diplomatic backing, we have weapons, we have ammunu uh, ammunition, gas and so on, and even the national building uh, when the peace uh, resumes. And recently, uh, Vietnam considered Russia to be a strategic partner and Vietnam needs Russia backing in international institutions given that uh, Russia has a role to play because it is a permanent member of the United Nations Security Council. And uh, it's really interesting because you see that under the Putin visit to Vietnam have been criticized by the West, mm. uh, especially the United States. And, but uh, it represents Vietnam's omnidirectional engagement with regional powers, including historical partners like uh, Russia. And one interesting thing is that uh, the Vietnamese perception of Russia and especially Putin is quite good at the same time, even though we have the Ukraine war happening now. Mm. Very interesting, um, the Ukraine war for Vietnam, because, um, you know, historically, Raymond, yeah. Vietnam has relations with Ukraine as well. Yes, very, also very strong. Actually, the people-to-people -people, uh, relationship, also educational exchanges, a large uh, amount of uh, number of uh, students studies in Ukraine and in Russia and vice versa, mm. and also culture links. And, but uh, Vietnamese has been, government has been very, very careful since the outbreak of the full-scale invasion of Ukraine. They never uh, voted for the sanctions in the United Nations uh, against Russia. Mm. They always, until now, abstain from voting against Russia. Mm. And they kept this uh, strategic balancing very, very carefully. And uh, also, uh, I think... They've sent um, some support to Kiev. Yeah, understand. also, yeah, to, to although balance. short of uh, weaponry or ammunition, but support. Okay. So it's okay. a careful move of a balancing. Mm. Okay. Professor Hoon, tell me, who do you think needs who more, Vietnam or Russia, right now? Right now, I think uh, Russia needs Vietnam more, yes. Uh, because uh, Russia needs a leverage to engage with Southeast Asia, and Vietnam can consider to be a risk that Russia uh, want to foster tie with regional powers, given Vietnam good reputation uh, in Southeast Asia. And previously, we consider Indonesia to be the de facto leader of ASEAN, mm. but now Vietnam has emerged to be the de facto leader in terms of its consideration, its mm. uh, initiative, and its active contribution towards monitoring the reputation of ASEAN. Mm. Okay, let's quickly talk about ASEAN then, yeah. Raymond. You know, what, what's Putin's interest in ASEAN? Russian Federation has strong interest in Asia, ASEAN. And the, in the 1990s, the gateway for Russians' influence is there is Indonesia and um, uh, under Mahadi. And, but now Vietnam is considered as a gateway to introduce uh, Russians' influence into or, or cooperation or dialogue with ASEAN. And also the ASEAN countries have the ASEAN centrality principle, which they will f uh, deal with uh, foreign affairs unitedly through ASEAN as a, uh, as a platform. And also ASEAN will open up the 
cooperation with uh, other international regimes like the Shanghai Cooperation Forum or uh, Eurasia Cooperation Forum. So the uh, huge uh, potential is presented there. And Russia is also very, very interested in expanding its influence, including through all those regimes and also through the BRICS regimes. So uh, I think that uh, strike the mutual benefit for the ASEAN connections for Vietnam. Okay, now let's move back to Vietnam and Russia. Now observers were watching for a potential sanctions defying arms deal from the Putin visit. The joint statement said this, both sides emphasize the special role of defense and security cooperation in their overall relationship. Putin also talked of creating an adequate and reliable security architecture for Asia Pacific based on the principles of not resorting to force. Moscow has long been Vietnam's main arms supplier. Most of the ships of the Vietnamese Navy come from Russia. Putin arrived in Hanoi with the new defense minister, Andrei Belousov. So, Professor Hun, let me um, ask you, what do you think both sides wanted from each other in terms of defense? Um, I think Vietnam is seeking defense uh, support from Russia, while Russia is trying to self-defend Western. But recently, uh, Russia is in trouble. And uh, because the, the reality is that uh, Russia reliability in defense partner is increasingly in question. Uh, and its defense industry uh, look toward Chinese, North Korea, and Iranians support to sustain its uh, warfare in the Ukraine. And uh, let's get back to, to Vietnam, even before the, the war in uh, Ukraine, Vietnam has begun to diversify its arms supply and Vietnam has been looking to many other partners like the United States, Israel, and even South Korea. Mm. So I think uh, the relationship is kind of not balancing right now. Mm. Okay. Uh, uh, Raymond, uh, d does Vietnam still see uh, a role for, for Russia in terms of its security? Uh, and would you think this would be the case against China in the South China Sea. So Professor Hong just uh, mapped it out very, very amazingly that the shift is happening uh, in terms of uh, Vietnamese defense. Mm -hmm. And traditionally, it relies heavily on the provision of uh, from Russia because of the cost and because of the weapon systems. Um, but it's, uh, now it's uh, shifting to a different direction, which is um, contribution to our dialogue, but uh, I think... Um, so, so, not, so not Russia, maybe more the U.S. in the South China Sea? In yes, terms of especially when that uh, Vietnamese uh, st strategic position is uh, more and more important nowadays for the Western world. Yeah. Mm. Okay, um, and Professor Hoon, let's look on the other side then. So what does, uh, what does Russia want from from Vietnam? Does it want munitions? I, I heard that some analysts said that Moscow asked all its partners to send munitions for the Ukraine war? Um, I, th I think Russia is trying to court Vietnam to send ammunition to uh, the, the war in Ukraine. However, Vietnam has been really prudent not to do so and just trying to not to make something really clear on the press. Yeah. Mm, okay, so, so you don't believe that they, don't they believe have it. all that they will? Okay, right, so following Putin's visit to Vietnam, the top U.S. diplomat also visited Hanoi to maintain momentum on the U.S. partnership, which was upgraded to the same level as China and Russia's in September 2023. U.S. Assistant Secretary of State for East Asia and Pacific Affairs Daniel Crittenbrink said his visit was aimed to make sure that all the agreements reached between Joe Biden and Communist Party leader Nguyen Phu Trong were implemented, calling the upgrade to their partnership historic and momentous. He said, we continue to believe that U.S.-Vietnam partnership has never been stronger. Raymond, why was it important for the U.S. to send Crittenberg? In September 2023, when uh, President Biden paid his personal visits, they visited to Vietnam. In their joint statement, they said they map out the um, possible future for mutual assistance, including digital reform, including supply chain security, science and technology, trade, investment, and innovation, including electric vehicle and climate change, green energy, more a uh, future-leaning uh, direction. It's a full recognition, in full recognition of the important space as a powerhouse for manufacturing in the global supply chain now that the Vietnam occupies now. So Vietnam is really the center of the uh, security of the supply chain, and that place is um, uh, to, very, very big for the U.S. to ignore. Mm. 
And Professor Hume, there was a, a recent economic dialogue, isn't it, between the U.S. and, and Vietnam, where they, they talked, um, a large focus was on chips and the, the chips sort of ecosystem. How important is that for Vietnam? Uh, I think it's quite um, important for Vietnam. It's crucial for the chip industry in Vietnam because we, we know that Vietnam is trying to uh, get into the chip supply chains, uh, especially fostering with the relationship with many partners like the United States, South Korea, and even Taiwan. And so I think the good experience and uh, hands-on experience and expertise the United States can help Vietnam so much in the supply chains. And uh, because another reason is that the United States has a very close relationship with South Korea, Taiwan, and other Western powers. So Vietnam will have uh, leverage to play in this uh, chip uh, power. Mm. And, and staying on you a, a little bit, um, you know, the, the in terms of the optics of the U.S. sending, um, you know, their top um, East Asian diplomats straight on the heels of Putin. W again, wh why was that important to to do that? I think it's really uh, important uh, because that uh, is so a clear commitment to what bolstering relationship between. Uh, uh, the United States and uh, Vietnam. And we all know that uh, Vietnam currently has seven comprehensive strategic partnerships. However, when considered with other uh, partners, the United States is considered to be the late comer in the glove. Uh, we have the China in, two th in 2008. We have Russia in 2012, India in 2016, and South Korea in 2022. So uh, the United States is just a latecomer in this game. Mm -hmm. And the second issue is that I think the United States is trying to uh, balance uh, between the U.S. Embassy reverse criticism and this time commitment to war, uh, fostering ties uh, between the two countries. And uh, the third reason is that uh, was it the perception of the comprehensive strategic partnership? At the core of comprehensive strategic partnership is just, so that's the reasons why uh, the senior U.S. diplomat, uh, he said in Hanoi that the trust between the two countries were at on-time high and only Vietnam can decide how better to safeguard its sovereignty and advance its interests. So I think the message here is quite really uh, meaningful and really perceptive. And the U.S. policymakers, they are quite perceptive of Vietnam uh, considerations. And even, um, you know, in Hanoi, uh, Christian Burt, he criticized China so much uh, he said that the behaviors of China in the South China Sea have been irresponsible, aggressive, dangerous, and deeply uh, destabilizing. So I think on the message, they show the implicit support for Vietnam. Professor Hoon, and just picking up on what you said earlier, now before the Putin visit, uh, the U.S. Embassy in Hanoi criticized uh, the, the visit. Uh, so implicitly criticizing Hanoi uh, for allowing uh, a visit which would essentially give Putin a platform to promote its war in Ukraine and also to normalize the atrocities there. How, how was this taken by Vietnam? Um, the Vietnamese government has been really uh, silent on that issue. It, it just said that Vietnam has the right to uh, fulfill, the right to operate its foreign policy. And I think that's the message from the U.S. Embassy is quite symbolic. But there's no way that you, the United States cannot criticize Vietnam on uh, Putin visas. But it does not, and I think in the future, it will not affect the relationship between the United States and, and Vietnam. Mm. So that bamboo, dam, bamboo diplomacy we see um, in action. Uh, Raymond, so with this visit, be Vietnam becomes the only country to host state visits yep. from all the three top powers, China, Russia, um, and the US in the past year. Yes. Um, so obviously we've talked about the reasons why these powers value Vietnam. Tell me, how do you think China would view uh, a closer Russia-Vietnam relationship? China will grasp its teeth and go on. Actually, Vietnam is um, it's the only people which ever defeated China. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've been waged against Chinese uh, in warfare for thousands of years. The toughness of this nation is well known in China. And uh, the importance of uh, Vietnam in terms of uh, tr attracting businesses uh, so to choose Vietnam as a manufacturing basis uh, is uh, very, very clear to China. So China has to deal with the prospect that Vietnam is a uh, force to be dealt with. And uh, there's no escape of that. And uh, it's a clever uh, move of uh, diplomacy 
drawing a closer or given putting a platform and uh, even will contribute to that direction even more. Mm. Professor Hoon, so will China just simply grit its teeth and carry on? Uh, I think to the, Ch the perception of Chinese leaders, uh, Vietnam closer cooperation with China, uh, with Russia will not anger China as much as uh, the closer relationship with the United States uh, because unlike Washington, uh, Moscow is not a threat to Beijing mm. and the comprehensive influence of Russia is waning in the Indo-Pacific and the third is that Russia-China ties are better than ever according to the relationship and uh, some statement from the Chinese and uh, Russian leaders. So to Chinese leaders, they are kind of acceptable for Vietnam to foster relationship with uh, Russia and to the benefits of Vietnam. I think um, uh, Vietnam is trying to ensure that Russia cooperation with China will not uh, must take into the consideration of Vietnam interests and potential challenges. So uh, Russia has leverage to play in the triangles. Mm. And, and, and how do you think it might use that leverage? Uh, I think Vietnam, it depends on Vietnam agency, especially state grab and Mr. Craig power politics. And second, how can Vietnam uh, take advantage of its uh, geopolitics and its uh, leverage in the mindset of Chinese leaders, uh, Russian leaders and uh, Washington leaders. And I think that um, uh, in, in recent time, it's quite uh, work capable for Vietnam to do so, but in the long run, it's quite dangerous because of the great power ballistic and the dramatic ballistic is going on in the Indo-Pacific. Mm. Professor Hoon, um, final question. Uh, you know, taken as a whole, uh, Putin's Asian visits, how do you see that strengthening, um, you know, its influence in this region? What, what sort of, does, what actual practical on the ground differences does it make? Um, I think the Putin visits has signals that uh, its diplomatic influence is still vital to other allies and partners in the region. And second, uh, Putin has trying to show a strongman leadership and despite the sanction from the Western country, the United States and its allies, there is no way that they can stop Putin uh, from uh, taking uh, a diplomatic outreach, mm. especially to historical and traditional allies. And Vietnam can consider to be the platform for the Putin to assert in diplomatic influence in the region. Mm. And, and so how far would you think that the, the US um, you know, will, will accept this? Or does it have no, no choice? Um, I think the United States under well, understand really well about the historical and traditional relationship between Vietnam and uh, Russia. And because the reason is that Russia has been sanctioned. And another is that uh, Russia is considered to be a waning power. Its influence has been uh, narrowed down. So there's no way the United States can fear that Russia can assert a strong influence in Vietnam. And uh, as Raymond mentioned before, with the painful diplomacy, uh, Vietnam uh, foreign policy has been really dramatic. And Vietnam recognized that fostering relationship with the United States is quite really, really important for Vietnam to uh, enhance its relationship with Western power and to have a shock of economic and diplomatic leverage to uh, engage with international institutions. If you liked our show, please search for us on YouTube, give us a thumbs up and hit subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching the show today. Stay safe and see you next time. There's so many things that I wish the world to see. It is amazing to watch this captain maneuver this giant ship. It takes three days to cook this. The flavor is unbelievable, incredible. And it's my turn to make something inspired by Chef Gore. It's gonna be quite a challenge. Can you imagine that? It's surreal, yes, yeah, surreal. I can't give up. I got some ass kicking to do. Nice move. We're pushing each other to explore and experiment in new, different ways. Five, four, three, two... A warm welcome to Taiwan Plus News.
Exploring the issues that matter to you. Not just to Taiwan, the whole world is watching. We might encounter mishaps and mistakes along the way. But at the end of the day, it just transmits something straight from the heart. Yes. <laughs> Cheers. Bon appetit. It is about the fun and it's about the glamour and it's also about something much deeper than that. Sometimes you just gotta seize the opportunity. You just gotta do it. You have a place where you're appreciated for you exactly as you are and where you can shine and be seen. We bring you stories from Taiwan. Every day of the week. Our reporters travel the nation. Exploring the issues that matter to you. News from here in Taiwan and around the world. What's up Taiwan on Taiwan Plus. At Connected, we believe in the power of dialogue. It's not just about the headlines, it's about finding common ground. Join the conversation. Connected with Divya Gopalan on Taiwan Plus.